You're watching Jakarta Globe News Channel. I'm Florence Armin, and this is The Perspective. This time around, we will be talking about education partnership between Indonesia and Australia, what opportunities lies ahead. And in the studio this time, we have Vice Chancellor and President of the Trope University, Professor John Doerr, who's uh, graced us with his presence. Thank you very much. I understand it's been a long journey. Uh, for you to get here to Jakarta. Yeah, which is an absolute pleasure to be here, Florence. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, professor, if you can tell us a little bit about your academic journey before getting into my, it. My own academic yes. journey? Well, I'm, I'm a lawyer by background. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought I'd become a vice chancellor of the university. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to be a barrister. Um, but Barrister, I uh, a lawyer, and now you're a vice chancellor of university. That's right. But I, I just fell in love with universities. Uh -huh. um, became head of a law school, then dean of a law school, mm -hmm. uh, then took over running a business school as well, mm -hmm. and eventually found myself in a position where becoming a university president was the next step, mm -hmm. and I was very lucky to be appointed to the position at La Trobe University mm -hmm. just over four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. What about university life that's, a, that's, that, that, that's appealing to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's endlessly fascinating. Mm -hmm. Universities are full of really smart, very highly motivated, very competitive people uh, doing great things. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really it in a nutshell. Uh, and for me it's an enormous privilege to be able to play a leadership role in an organisation like that. I just think universities are one of the most important institutions in any civil society. Uh, we have such a profoundly positive influence on the life's, life chances of our students, but also through the research uh, we do and the, the changes that that makes. We've just come from uh, the leading cancer hospital in Jakarta, mm -hmm. um, and I, I know from the work we do in cancer medicine that the, the impact that that has on the lives of patients is really quite profound. So it's a, it's a great honour to be. Would you consider yourself an educator? Um, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. I would. Um, it's not, as I said, it's not what I thought I would become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, my mother was a teacher, and I think there's always been that part of, of me that has enjoyed interacting with students yeah. and discovering new things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, about La Trobe University itself, tell us uh, how, uh, how is it different than any other u universities in Australia? Um, La Trobe is uh, a really special university. Mm -hmm. It was established almost 50 years ago. We turn 50 next year mm -hmm. um, in an era of enormous social upheaval, great student unrest. Um, and it was, La Trobe kind of burst on the scene in, in the late 60s. Uh, with a very different mission from other institutions. Its role was to um, accept or, or bring into the university sector students who hadn't previously enjoyed that opportunity, uh, but also to conduct research at a global level, but it, to do so in disciplines that hadn't previously had such a focus in Australian universities. For example, Asian studies, for example. Mm -hmm. I think the late 60s was a period when uh, Australia was starting to become much more conscious of its place in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so at La Trobe we have a very profound commitment to the study of the Asian region. We're one of only two universities in Australia that teaches Indonesian language, for example. Oh. Um, and we, we also teach the, all four of the so-called strategic Asian languages, namely Mandarin, Japanese, Hindi and Indonesian. Mm -hmm. um, so our, our commitment to Asia is, is long running and very, very deep. Um, but other areas that were only just becoming topical at the time, like environmental studies, uh, water management, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So the university has really developed over the, over the last 50 years into a very powerful research organization. We've just been ranked in the top 400 universities in mm -hmm. the world. Um, and in the life sciences, which is one of our particular strengths, uh, we've just been uh, ranked in the top 200 universities. So. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm proudest about at La Trobe is the fact that we are such a diverse community of staff and students. We have international students from 120 countries around the world. Um, we've discharged that mission. What's the percentage of international students? It's about 27%. 27% um, and you earlier mentioned 60 uh, Indonesian students. That's right, 60 to. Indonesian students. Yes, we'd love to have more, mm -hmm. but um, and the numbers from Indonesia are growing steadily. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but uh, yes, we have a very diverse community on our campus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was just talking to my colleague yesterday, uh, 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 doing a little bit of research, and mentioned that uh, I will have an interview interview with La Trobe University. This is one of the things he mentioned. You mm -hmm. have one of the most beautiful campuses. We do. Where you able to see kangaroos <laughs> roaming free? Yes. Is this is this, is this true? <laughs> this is true. It's absolutely true, and not not just kangaroos. There's, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of wildlife, mm -hmm. um, possums. Um, we have a, a, a nesting pair of wedge-tailed eagles. Uh, we have a wildlife reserve on our campus where uh, a lot of native wildlife can, can be seen. In fact, we, we're working with the local zoo uh, to ensure that some endangered species uh, can live safely in that wildlife in a campus, reserve. In, in a campus. Yeah, uh, so there's a very sp special kind of possum, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Leadbetter's possum, which we're working to help the Melbourne Zoo uh, to preserve mm -hmm. some of the threat of extinction. All right. Now, so Professor John Dewar will be talking more about why he's currently in Indonesia when we come back.